Welcome back to this panel discussion, Trends in Satellite Acquisition Augmenting Government SATCOM, sponsored by SES Government Solutions, here on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Our guests today are Aaron Miller. He's the Chief of the Services Division for the COM SATCOM Center at the Defense Information Systems Agency, and Ben Camerlin, the SATCOM Program Manager at the General Services Administration. And uh, Aaron, I wanted to ask you, uh, continuing with our theme here of innovation ways to get satellite communications to a customer, uh, one of the things that some agencies are looking at, one of the techniques is to put a hosted payload aloft, that is their own communication device on somebody's commercial satellite. That's, but that's one of many of the innovations that you're seeing. Uh, that's right, Tom. And I think we are, the department is interested in having an innovative approach moving forward with ComSatCom, whether that be a hosted payload, which will require us to have our global uh, enduring requirement well-defined, uh, and then partner with industry on a hosted payload. I think that gives us an opportunity to have a shared investment and to save some money for the taxpayer. But we're also looking uh, or very interested in leverage other capabilities that commercial brings to the table. Uh, there's a bunch, like Ben mentioned earlier, there are some high capacity, high through put satellites being launched. There are some new global managed service solutions uh, being offered. And if we can leverage those in a partnership where we get into a by minute, by, by megabit type deal instead of just buying the whole transponder or the whole satellite, uh, there could be some utility and some opportunity for cost savings. Um, so we're interested in many of the innovative solutions. Just, it's just a matter of understanding our requirement, understanding our enduring need, and, and then, like I said, making the right investment, the right deal. Because a hosted payload is definitely a risk management and a shared risk situation. Sure. More so than you launch it and we'll buy the, the service. Yes, we, we're, we're invested in that for a 10 to 15 year period. And we have to make sure the security aspects are covered, make sure we can leverage that investment for, for the time frame. Uh, the best time would have been to make that would have been right in 2000, right over the Middle East because we'd have leveraged every bit of it. Right now, launching a host payload in the Middle East may or may not be the best solution for the department because if you have to know where your mission is going the next 10, 15 years. And of course, that's basically anybody's guess. Yes, sir. All right, and at GSA, I mean, what are some of the ways that you're looking to get greater bandwidth, greater capability at increasingly lower cost to customers that ask both those questions? Sure, so um, we're, we're definitely looking at um, hosted payloads, as you've mentioned, for the rest of our federal government customers where they might have a very specific scientific or meteorological type of, um, of mission where you can bolt on a small payload to a commercial launch and that really helps offset the costs where you don't have to design, develop, and launch your own full satellite. So they can really share some of those costs for the hosted payloads for those missions. Um, and then as Aaron mentioned, you know, we're definitely looking at the, um, the managed services and the, um, the high throughput capacity satellites just to make sure that those options are available for our GSA contracts for um, the federal government to procure. And what are the economics of this uh, high throughput, high bandwidth? Because in some ways you're paying for a premium service, but as it approaches uh, you know, uh, ground or land mm -hmm. type of speeds and throughputs, then do you need the satellite? I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you balance all of that? Well, you're, you're still going to need the satellite because the main, the main time satellite communications comes into play is where there's no other ground infrastructure available. Um, one of the greatest advantages of the high throughput satellites is the, um, the shared modem technology where basically all users are on the same, in the same network. So it's more of a um, internet type communications as opposed to a dedicated, uh, think back to a, a least ISDN line as compared to a, um, you know, your 50 meg at home internet connection that we have today. So you do see a lot of offsets on the shared use of it. One of the disadvantages, a lot of those use proprietary terminal and modem technologies. So as, um, as I mentioned, we need to figure out how to either include that modem and terminal technology into the cost of the service, or one of the other things for the terminal and modem manufacturers is to have more, as Aaron mentioned, we do have a lot of tri-band, quad-band terminals for different spectrums, but we really don't have the same on the modem side. So whether it's a software-defined modem or modular interchangeable modems, where if you're using one service that uses one modem technology, you can pull it out and put that in or, and really swap back and forth that way to find the most efficient use to, of satisfying the requirement. Is that a 19-inch rack type of situation or how, what, are the, what are the form factors on these things? 
Well, form factor is always an issue, and I think it differs. I mean, some of our, our, our platforms are airborne, there are airplanes, there are U, uh, UAVs, or there are mm -hmm. man packs. So uh, it all depends on the mission and on, on the type of service being provided. But I would like to echo on, on, on Ben's last answer to the question. I think part of the economics of it, we just don't know. Uh, the market will stabilize when, when these new satellites are launching into space, and hopefully we'll see much better price points. Uh, we're, we want to take, we want to leverage those price points. Like if, if those new satellites cut the cost in half of bandwidth, we'll be, we'll be ecstatic. But we have to wait and see how the market um, responds to these new capabilities being provided. And I guess a final question we should touch on today, because it is communications, it is digital, and so the cybersecurity question comes up for these types of communications. And is there an extra load on the bandwidth if you use encryption, or what are some of the cyber best practices for, for satellite comm? All the leases we do at DISA, we try to make sure we follow CNSSP 12 and make sure that uh, we do an eye assessment of that, because the DOD is very interested in having mission-assured communications. Things like command encryption on the spacecraft and how to control it for assured access. Uh, and yes, all of our communication should be encrypted by bulk encryption and type 1 encryption uh, as, as it supports the mission set. And do you find that, too, for the commercial side or the, the government civilian side, that they care about that as much as they do for any other comm? Cyber. Yes, I think it's a um, you know cybersecurity is definitely a risk for the entire government, and we do um, you know as Aaron mentioned, we do m ensure that all of our contractors and suppliers are in compliance with the national policy on um, space spacecraft encryption and using um, command encryption for the capacity that they provide. All right, so a lot of specialized knowledge. I want to thank today's guests for bringing it to us. Uh, ben Camerlin is the SATCOM Program Manager at the General Services Administration, and Aaron Miller is the Chief of the Services Division for Com SATCOM Center at the Defense Information Systems Agency. I'm Tom Temin, Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com.